If we pass the DREAM Act, we're going to allow almost a million people to be legalized. And these people aren't going to forget about their families. I mean, even if we, and, and the DREAM Act's not going to legalize all undocumented youth either, but having a million people legalized is going to give us more power and more ability to organize. And that's why we need to pass the DREAM Act right now. The eight were all born in Mexico but grew up in the United States. Now they're borrowing a tactic from the gay rights movement. They're coming out as undocumented. In Chicago's Federal Plaza, the youths took the stage, their faces for all to see. My name is Reina, and I am undocumented. I will not hide any longer. I will come out of the shadows. I'm a human being. I deserve to be happy. There's no fear. Immigrants are marching here. No papers, 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 no fear. No one is illegal. Power to the people. No one is illegal. Power to the people. No one is illegal. Power to the people. The DREAM Act is something that will allow a lot of youth um, to have a path to legalization. It's either through military service or through being in a college or university for two years. We think this is a good step. Well, wouldn't granting legal status to undocumented young people, even though they grew up here, wouldn't that just reward their parents for having flouted U.S. law and come into this country illegally or overstayed visas? I think it's difficult to answer that when all your parents did was cross a piece of land. Um, we'll be talking about the immigrant movement, but from the youth perspective, emphasizing the work that we have done, um, especially in direct action and in being out front and open about our status and really using that to push um, the DREAM Act and to push immigrant rights. We've come to this point where we are able to say very openly, out front and fearlessly, that we're undocumented, but that we do want to be in this country, that we deserve to be in this country, and that we're willing to fight um, to stay here. I um, didn't think I had an opportunity to go to college for a long time until I was approached by a group of undocumented students which was founded in the year 2003 at the University of California, Los Angeles. I had just been accepted and I thought I was going to take classes at the local community college while I waited for this one piece of legislation to pass that I had heard about and it's called the DREAM Act. Uh, but they told me that I should apply to scholarships and, and that you know, where there's a will, there's a way. So I became involved and I ended up going to UCLA. I stayed in school, I went to UCLA, I became an activist, I studied political science uh, and especially focusing on immigration uh, and migration, not just to the United States but all over the world. And I, I decided that I was going to dedicate my life to bringing social change uh, and because of that I made the move last year to Washington DC uh, to do a volunteer work at the National Immigration Law Center and part of it to build, uh, to help build along with all these folks, a national network of undocumented youth. There was a lot of fear to say, I'm undocumented, to say, you know, to share our legal status with other people. Um, I shared my story with uh, a few of my professors and they told me, you know, you shouldn't tell people. You should not tell people that you're undocumented. Um, back in 2003, I learned about the DREAM Act um, through someone who later became one of my best friends. Um, she asked me to sign a petition and I did. And when I started reading more about the, the proposal, I realized that it was going to um, benefit me. So I started working for it. I started getting my friends and my families and everyone um, who I knew to sign the petition and to go to rallies and you know do different things. But it wasn't until 2007 that I felt very comfortable or more comfortable with saying, you know, I'm undocumented. I exist, I live here, I'm a human being, and I deserve to be in school. Um, I was 15. I didn't have a driver's license, but I was still driving. I thought it was really cool because, you know, I was allowed to drive to school, but I parked somewhere where I wasn't supposed to um, in my high school. And I was called out of class, called to my principal's office, and besides just being asked um, either to move my car or, you know, to call my parents so they can move my car, I was asked um, additionally for my driver's license, which I said, you know, I don't have one. Um, and they were like, well, why don't you have one? And I was like, because I, I don't. And they're like, well, why? And I'm just like, I can't. And my high school principal looked at me and said, well, then what are you doing here? 
and I was 15 and I was, I was really shocked and I was like, what do you mean, what am I doing here? My mom came in with her broken English and said, you know, you will never speak to my daughter in this way again. I, I, don't, I, don't, under, I don't care who you are. Um, if you're the principal, if you're the king of whatever, he's, she was like, you know, you're not going to speak to her like that and you're not going to make her cry because I will sue you. No one is illegal, power to the people. No one is illegal, power to the people.